climate negotiations, international finance, and clementines. What's the connection? Well, when I buy this clementine, I'm also paying for the fossil fuels that are used to produce it in the field and to transport it to me. What I'm not paying for are the health and environmental impacts associated with using those fossil fuels. As the world transitions to low carbon options, the hidden costs of using fossil fuels will become a lot more apparent, and that means fossil fuels will be a liability. But there are two titans from the world of finance who say it doesn't have to be that way. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg and Bank of England Governor Mark Carney announced Bloomberg will lead a new task force on climate-related financial disclosure. Carney said more transparency of climate risks and climate pricing impacts will help investors make decisions and also accelerate the growth of clean energy. Once you have the information to make judgments about individual companies and sectors and companies as a whole, as there's progress, that transition gets pulled forward. Almost as much as profits, investors like clarity. Climate investment expert Stephanie Pfeiffer said it's especially important to funds with long-term targets. Imagine you're a pension fund. You have to pay out pensions for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So of course you're going to be impacted strongly by the physical impacts, but also if regulation suddenly changes because governments are trying to catch up, it will have a huge impact. Sakhar Nusebi manages a $30 billion pension fund that has to deliver profits decades from now. The reason that this has become a big issue is very simply that uh, people have come to the realization that governments are not going to allow us to burn all these coal assets and oil assets. And that means that the price of these companies must be much lower than people think they are because the assets they own are never going to be used. For an idea of what's at stake, this is what fossil fuel use would look like for the next 20 years without any climate action. Think of this as fossil fuel assets. If the world meets its goal to keep emissions in a safe range, that amount drops significantly. For investors who didn't anticipate and prepare for that change, this portion of the assets that they were expecting would be gone, with ripple effects through the entire global economy. Anthony Hobley is the CEO of Carbon Tracker, a group at the forefront of calculating fossil fuel risks in the financial world. I think what's fascinating for me, and I've been to many of these climate summits over the years, um, is that for the first time we have the governor of a major central bank, the Bank of England, and the chair of the Financial Stability Board attending a climate summit. I mean, that tells you something. I think that tells you that we are in the midst of a transition or a tipping point, if you like. Pfeiffer says there's no doubt that this understanding extends to the highest level of high finance. And this is the first year really that the investors have turned out in force at a COP because they see this as a critical moment. They're convinced the energy transition is happening and, and they want to have their voice heard at this really important event. The world is changing, right? And we know that we can influence the way it's going to develop. And, and this is something people have got to realize. that. Your viewers have got to understand they have power. The power is they own the assets, right? And the companies they invest in shape the world they live in. And they can help shape it in a way they want to shape it. Through billion dollar investment funds, or one clementine at a time. In Paris, I'm Saroja Coelho for Green TV.